Welcome back in, everyone, to our interview booth here at the 2024 Arizona Tennis Classic. Joining us now in our booth is a man who is through to round number two of this Phoenix Challenger. Of course, he's currently the world number 84. Welcome on to our show, Daniel Galan. Daniel, first of all, congratulations to you on the victory. I know it was straight sets, but it was a tricky four and four out there. Talk me through the match. What worked so well for you today? Yeah, thank you very much for, for having me. Uh, yeah, I'm super happy I was able to get through. It was definitely a not, not an easy match. He was like, I mean, he, he's really good, like a, a great serve. And um, fortunately, I was able to take the chances that I had, like the few, the few that I had, I took them and it was, that was very important for me. Yeah, it, it worked well for you today. Now, obviously you're facing a lefty. I know, watched a lot of your footage over the years. Just, you know, you're a guy who likes to hit that forehand to run around and protect that backhand wing. It's a little bit tougher to do, obviously, facing a southpaw. I thought you hit the backhand well today. I'm curious how you thought, how you would assess that as well. Like, I, I just felt like you were able to impose your will today. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, it's not easy to play a lefty. Yeah. I mean, here or in any surface is diff is different. The spin is totally different, mm -hmm. and uh, is I think for most players are very uncomfortable to mm -hmm. play them. But yeah, like you said, I was able to hit the backhand pretty good today. Um, mo most of the time, I was not really defensive. I was mm -hmm. like. In, in control more or less but uh, yeah it was I mean I was able to return also well that is very important uh, against a player like him so mm -hmm. yeah no uh, again a win's a win right now you're through to round number two before this month you were down in South America playing a bunch of clay court events I'm curious how difficult that transition is to go from playing there I think you were in Santiago the last week right at elevation you're on red clay now you're here in Phoenix playing on hard courts how difficult is that transition to make Definitely, it's not easy, mm -hmm. and for us from South America, it's more difficult to change yeah. than the other one. The, the other way, we, mm -hmm. we get to feel more comfortable because we grow up on clay, so sure. it's definitely not easy. Uh, but, you, I mean, you have to get used to as quick as possible, and, uh, I mean, it took me it took me a week <laughs> <laughs> because in India, I, I lost, uh, like, really, really fast, mm -hmm. and, uh, but, yeah, I'm really happy I, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better mm -hmm. this week, so it's very important. This is a little bit of a tangent, but I'm curious, th th it came out, and whenever Andy Murray tweets anything, it's going to get attention, but I think this sentiment has been there for a while. That's South American clay court swing. I mean, you look at the crowds in Rio and how they were supporting someone like Fonseca, their home countryman. You look at the crowds in Santiago, what they do for Alejandro Tabilo or Nicolas Yari, who was able to win that event. Is it time for South America to have a 1,000 level event? And I'm curious the support you see. I know there's no ATP event in Colombia, but to be relatively in proximity to your home country, do you feel that energy, that enthusiasm? Yeah, I feel like there is a lot of history in South America for yeah. uh, uh, in tennis. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously Colombia is not the biggest, sure. I understand, but I, I feel in, in South America we're we're doing great and uh, I feel like for the support and the amount of tournaments we yeah. have, we are uh, like plenty of, of guys in the top 100, no? And also top, be like yeah. close to the top 100. And I think, I mean, I don't know if uh, a Master 1000, I mean, it will be great, <laughs> yeah, it will be sure. awesome. But I feel like we, we do deserve more tournaments, uh, uh, in my opinion. Obviously, I, I know the, the calendar is like super tight mm -hmm. all the time, but like it's also not <laughs> yeah. not great to take one of those tournaments, the mm -hmm. four that we had during the entire year to 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 be gone. Uh, and I mean, it's a shame, but definitely, uh, uh, yeah, a place that deserves a little bit more. No, I feel, and yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. not only us yeah. think, <laughs> think of that. So it's, I mean. No, I completely agree with you. Like, it feels like March and, Fe and February should be flipped in order. Like, let's do Indian Wells, Miami, the hard courts first. Then we'll go to South America for a little clay court swing. We can head to Europe. Uh, again, very easier said in theory, I suppose, to try and make those changes. But, you know, for you personally right now, I know I'm mid to late 20s now, you're getting a little older, more experienced in terms of tour level matches. What are your goals for 2024? What are you hoping to accomplish this season on tour? Uh, well, definitely I don't focus much on the numbers okay. because uh, in the past I did and yeah. it was not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, fair uh, enough. You, 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 you get more pressure mm -hmm. if you are thinking, oh, no, I have to do this or this or get these points or this. I feel like you, you have to focus in, like, 
in in, in improve mm -hmm. all the time in doing great and obviously winning matches but yeah. like it's very important if you improve because that way you you are gonna get more matches so i think more than the numbers i'm looking more for those things. I love to hear that. Do you consider, this is a very, you can slap me afterwards <laughs> if you don't like the question, I promise. Do you consider yourself a clay court specialist? Like, I'm just curious if you feel a little fish out of water here on these hard courts and knowing clay is on the horizon, how excited you are for these next two months? Ah, uh, that's an excellent question <laughs> that I don't know the answer. Uh, I enough. feel like everyone keeps telling me that I should play more often on hard because yeah. I, I'm not like classic clay cool exactly. guy. I don't play. I don't play high and high heavy. Yeah, and heavy. exactly. I play. I play like mm -hmm. hardcore, hardcore 100%. tennis. A hundred percent. And uh, I play the same on on clay. Yeah. I don't change my tennis. And on grass, for example, uh -huh. I also can do good. Yeah. And uh, I, I feel like it's more like mental things that we like barriers that we put ourselves. Like, oh no, yeah. I feel more comfortable on clay, sure. even though that I can do great on hard too. Mm -hmm. But it's like I think it's more like mental yeah. than really the really the struggle here. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you, Frodo. So I'm like, your game will work anywhere. So anyone who has accused you of being a clay court specialist, send them my way, and I'll set <laughs> them straight. I promise. Um, my last question for you: We are at the beautiful Phoenix Country Club. This is a unique event in the sense that there just aren't that many 175Ks on the calendar. I'm curious your thoughts here on Phoenix, this country club, this event, how you've enjoyed your Arizona Tennis Classic experience so far. I mean, I've been here two days yeah. and uh, so far, great. Let me, I mean, <laughs> you can see, you can see how beautiful the, <laughs> yeah, the, the club is and uh, we feel like really comfortable here mm -hmm. and the hotel is closed. Like mm -hmm. they, are, they are doing a great job. Uh, to make us feel comfortable, you know, mm -hmm. and that's I I think for the players that's very good, like very important, you know, like you have a week mm -hmm. between two ma Masters yeah. 1000, and I mean it's good that you play in conditions at least similar. Le the ball is the one mm -hmm. we are playing next week, so I think they're doing a great job, and like you said, it's a huge tournament, and mm -hmm. also big names here, like big players, like mm -hmm. everyone here. I don't know what was the call, like. 100 at least yeah, or something like 87 this. was the cutoff. 87, imagine. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, you got to love that. What, Wimbledon quarterfinalist, French Open quarterfinalist, Christian Green qualifying. He had to qualify to get into the major. Yeah. Yeah, it speaks to the depth. And, you know, again, certainly uh, have enjoyed being here as well. Certainly have enjoyed the opportunity to finally get the chance to speak with you. Sincerely, I've been a fan from afar for quite some time. So appreciate you taking the time to chat. And good luck this week, my friend. No, thank you very much, guys. And see you. I hope to see you next one. Yeah. After this.